Hello, welcome back to The Interface. My name's Alex, and today we're looking at the Suzuki Swift Sport. This car, really, in its current form, came out in 2018, and it hasn't really changed since then. Uh, this is obviously a 23 plate. It's a brand new, brand new model. Uh, there isn't really much different. So the Swift Sport is now a hybrid. So we've got a 48 volt mild hybrid system. It's like having a little bit of extra boost to help you along in, in between gear changes and when you're accelerating a little bit more performance. Yes, the Swift Sport is turbocharged and we do get 127 brake horsepower from the 1.4 litre petrol engine. That engine drives the front wheels through a six speed manual gearbox which is really lovely to use. And we'll get to that later in the video. Even for a car that hasn't been refreshed in a little while, the front design isn't really out of date at all. It's, as I said, it was refreshed in 2018 and it's still quite a modern design. So around the front, we've got these nice large headlights and we've got the Suzuki badge right here. We've also got this plastic trim here. It's like a fake carbon fiber sort of weave and it is definitely is, definitely is plastic, but it's not a problem at all. And we've got some fog lights down here. And this color is one of the bold colors that Suzuki has. So this is like a nice blue. And we also do get a championship yellow. There's also a white, there's also a, a red as well. And then there are some two-tone colors with red and blue as well. And they do look really good. There's also like a stealth black color as well, which looks quite striking. So when compared to the normal Swift, this one definitely looks a lot more aggressive. We've got some spoilers down here. It looks a lot more purposeful. So it makes the normal Swift look quite plain in comparison. So around the side of the Swift Sport, we've got a lovely chunky design. It sort of fits in with the Swift Sport sort of nature. We've got a nice side sill here, which is carbon fiber effect. Uh, we've also got the the folding mirror caps here, which are nice and small, especially when compared to the last Swift. Uh, the last generation Swift had quite large mirrors. We've also got these nice 17 inch diamond cut alloy wheels, which do come as standard on these Swift Sports. So we've got Continental tires on this car, and these are, and these tires are 195, 45, 17. We've got disc brakes all around on the Swift Sport as well. So we've got disc brakes on the rear, which in comparison to the Up GTI, this is obviously quite an upgrade. The Swift Sport can be had with a two-tone roof, so there is a blue option and a red option, and you can have a black roof on this one. And then for the rear doors, we've also got these inline handles, which make the car look more sleek. All right, so looking at the inside of the Suzuki Swift Sport, we've got a lovely sporty interior, and we've got a leather-wrapped steering wheel here, and we've got a bit of plastic at the bottom there. We've got a six-speed manual gearbox, and we've got a manual handbrake down here. We've got a infotainment screen there. The exact specs of this screen will be on the screen just now. And then we've got some nice red accenting across the whole interior. We've got some red accenting down here. We've got some bit on the door trim here. We've got a bit on the dashboard there. And regardless of what color Suzuki Swift you go for, so there's like a lot of color options. There's about eight different color options now. They haven't changed the interior, so the, the interior color won't match. It's always red to indicate that it's a sporty model. That red theme is everywhere throughout the interior. So we've got a red tachometer here. We've got the red stitching on the gearbox gator here. We've also got red stitching on these sports seats. We've got the red sport logo behind me as well. And then on the steering, we've got a little bit of red stitching down here as well. Elsewhere, we've got some nice touches. We've got metal pedals for the clutch, brake and accelerator. Then we've got a start stop button. So to get the car started, all you need to do is put the clutch down and the car springs into life. The Suzuki Swift Sport is packed full of tech. So we've got no options on this actual car. So when you go and order one brand new, there's no option to choose from. The only options you do get are some first party uh, styling options. So you get a stripe kit, as well and some different color uh, wheel caps and that sort of thing. So really ordering one brand new is quite simple. And then the nice thing is once you pick up one of these used, uh, you don't have to navigate a whole load of options and you know what has actually come on this car when you go to buy one. So what do we get? We get things like a climate control system with an automatic uh, temperature sensing. We get radar guided cruise control. We do get Apple CarPlay on this infotainment screen, but for some reason it isn't wireless, it's USB wired only. We get lane keep assist, we get a reversing camera. We also get parking sensors at the rear as well. So Suzuki so done a good job of packing this car full of lots of technology now. These seats are really good as well. So you get these sports seats, which hug you really well in corners. Uh, they're not electrical by any means at all. So you get a manual height adjustment on the right hand side here for me. And there's a metal rail underneath me to adjust the seat forward and back. It does go back pretty far, which is really good. And then you can get a good adjustment there. So tall people might not have a problem. The only thing I can think about is that these seats are sort of one piece, like the Volkswagen Up, and that might make people in the back feel a bit queasy, especially on longer journeys. In terms of cup holders, we've got two square cup holders here. They're a bit too close together for my liking. So if you've got two even small drinks from some of the coffee chains, they won't fit next to, next to each other quite well. So this is good for bottles and that sort of thing. And then behind me, there's a small cup holder back there. Okay, so just looking at the back of the Swiss Sport, you have to do watch how you get in, because uh, in a previous take, I did bash my head on the door. Um, but the seating back here is a little bit upright. So if I move this headrest up a little bit for myself, it's a bit better. We've got seating's very soft, actually. So a lot of the seating materials in the Swift Sport, very, very squidgy seats, very comfortable. As I mentioned in the front, these front seats do block a lot of visibility. They're quite large and quite bulbous, um, but they do have a good sort of cut out here for your legs. So there's a good amount of space underneath underneath the driver's seat for my feet. So if I sit down a little bit, 
Um, and there's a good amount of space for my feet there, so I'm not feeling too cramped. Uh, we've got a little door pocket here for a bottle. Um, some of the tip, some of the materials back here is a little bit scratchy, uh, but we've got a cup holder there, a square one. And we've got a map pocket in the passenger side only. Uh, the, this driver's side doesn't have a map pocket, it's a bit odd, but a lot of headroom in this Swift Sport. Uh, it's quite a tall car, so we've got a lot of headroom here for me, especially in the driver's, the driver's seat as well. I know there's a lot of headroom. Uh, so I've got a good, that's a good few inches of headroom, which is really good. And there is grab handles all around, apart from the driver's side, uh, which is good to see. So there is seating for five here. There's a good amount of space for rear passengers. And we have got a 60-40 split loading arrangement, uh, which we'll have a look at the boot space just now. So around the back of the Swift Sport, we've got a lovely sporty design. We've got the Suzuki badge here, got this Swift Sport badge in red here. Then we've also got the carbon fiber effect down here as well. Then we've got the dual exhaust tips as well, which sound really good. Looking at the boot space of the Swiss Sport, we've got a button under here to, to open the tailgate. We've actually got a really decent space in here. We've got 265 litres of boot space, and then the rear seats do fold down in a 60-40 arrangement. So we haven't got a false floor or anything, so there's no the sort of split uh, height adjustment for the boot. We've just got the boot space as it is, and it's a really, really decent space. I can see fitting a lot of shopping in here, quite a, a few small suitcases, um, but there's a good amount of space. So we've got a bit of a uh, carpet to pull up here. Then we've got a, a full-size spare wheel well by the look of things, and also some polystyrene which houses the puncture repair kit, as well as a tow eye and air compressor. We've also got a light here and a little hook to sort of hold your shopping in place. We've also got a cover on this side which houses the jack, so we're going to open that up. There's supposed to be a jack in there, but on this particular model there actually isn't one. Folding the rear seats down is pretty easy. All you need to do is go into one of the back doors and there's some catches to pull, so just open the back door there. And then there are some seat bar retainer clips which is really nice, nice to see. And then there's a clip here and you can fold the rear seats down. Same again the other side, just do that quickly. And then we've got a really, really good amount of space. As I said, there isn't a false floor here, so we don't get a fully flush loading bay. Um, so there is a big hump in between the back seats and the, the floor itself. So you can't get any big suitcases in quite easily from the sort of the back side. Um, but it's pretty good nonetheless. We've got a good amount of space here, especially for a small hatchback with this level of performance as well. Hello and welcome to the interior of the Suzuki Swift Sport. I've been driving this around for a few hours now and I think it's a really, really good car. It's a little bit expensive and more expensive than it ever used to be. The Swift Sport used to start at around £19,000, even less than that actually, uh, in 2018. And it now, it now retails for just under £24,000. And I'm not entirely convinced it's worth that price. However, when you compare it to other cars on the market, like the now discontinued Ford Fiesta, it does kind of make sense. So what have we got? Well, we've got a 1.4 litre turbocharged engine with a 48 volt mild hybrid system. And that gives you a bit of extra boost between gear changes. When you let off the accelerator, we've got a tiny battery icon in the tachometer display. And that lets you know that power is going back into the battery. In this area here, we've got some old fashioned physical dials. And this one on the right gives you the speed you're doing. And we've got a little tiny fuel gauge. On the left, we've got the tachometer as well as the temperature gauge. And in the middle, we've got a four inch display which gives you access to a digital readout of the speed, as well as some other modes here. This steering wheel is also really comfortable. It's leather wrapped. It's not too big, not too small. And for taller people, the leg room in between the bottom of the steering wheel and your knee is not gonna cause a problem. So if I fully bring my knee towards me, there's, it's not really, well, I bash into the steering wheel a little bit there, but it's not really causing me any problem. Now, in terms of performance, I daily drive a Volkswagen Up GTI. And this feels quite a bit faster than that car. So if we, get back to the speedometer here and knock it into what leave it in fourth actually acceleration is very good we get a little bit of noise from the exhaust it's not too loud and you can get some aftermarket exhaust systems for the swift sport especially those from miltech and you get a bit more sound from the car in terms of the handling so if we go around this roundabout pretty swiftly get some idea of what it's like to handle so if we give it some actual beans here i can feel the back end slipping out a little tiny little bit um, as we go around this roundabout here and then we'll knock it back into that lane. So you can feel it's a little bit loose at the back end, not massively so. It is a front wheel drive car with quite a bit of power. So just chuck it into that corner. And so acceleration's really good. It really gets up to speed very quickly. You're not gonna, not gonna be disappointed with the Swift Sport in terms of acceleration. So in conclusion, what do I think about this Drift Sport? Well, it's a little bit expensive, as I mentioned, 
but in terms of what else is on the market, it isn't too bad. If you're in the market for a small little car with plenty of power, definitely check out the Swift Sport, and it does come with plenty of option extras included in the price. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching this video from The Interface. If you want to learn more about what we make and do, check out our website, theinterface.uk, for more car content. Thank you for watching this video. My name's Alex, and we'll see you again next time. Three, two, one, audio sync. Suzuki Swift Sport. La 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 la. SD card full. Oh. Just looking at the back of the Swift Sport. Oh my God. So just looking at the rear boot space, we've got a little button underneath here to open the tailgate. And there's the, oh <laughs>